Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Of all the videos I've made over the years on the Great Pyramid of Egypt, I've never made one on the antechamber. The small room that you pass through from the Grand Gallery before entering the granite lined King's Chamber. It's called the antechamber, but a better name is the Portcullis Chamber because this small space is in fact a security feature, once housing three granite portcullis blocks installed to protect the contents of the King's Chamber. Researcher Keith Hamilton has just recently published two detailed guides on the Great Pyramid and I have used his work as a basis for this video. Because, as many of you will know, with regards to researching Ancient Egypt, Hamilton leaves no stone unturned. He produces comprehensive publications, but written in such a way that an expert or layperson can enjoy them, learn from them, and use them as study guides. I've left links to his academia.edu profile in the description below. Although the bulk of the Great Pyramid is made from limestone, like the King's Chamber, the Antechamber is also made from granite, and for good reason, so potential tomb robbers can't simply dig around the portcullis blocks and enter the King's Chamber. You enter the room through a two cubit wide passage from the Grand Gallery. On the right you'll find a metal grate installed to cover up the 19th century excavation by Giovanni Caviglia. The cavity reaches the King's Chamber northern shaft and, although close to the public, Rudolf Gantenbrink gained access a number of years ago to install a ventilation unit, and this is why we do have photographs today. The first stone you encounter is the one labelled Granite Leaf, which is actually two pieces of granite wedged into a groove. The three portcullis blocks are beyond the Granite Leaf. On the south wall of the antechamber, we see four vertical grooves clearly made to allow ropes to pass and lower the missing granite portcullis blocks. We get some good images of the antechamber from the Edgar Brothers, who investigated the Great Pyramid at the beginning of the 20th century, and some of their publications can be accessed online at archive.org. I've left some links in the description below. Here is a picture that's taken from inside Cavillia's excavation and we can see a headless Edgar brother standing between the north wall of the antechamber and the block labelled Granite Leaf. Here he is head intact, ducking beneath the Granite Leaf, which as stated is made up of two pieces of granite. Here you can see the horizontal joint. Sadly, the pilasters that guided the portcullis slab have been knocked away. This is likely to have been done not by tomb robbers, but actually by tourists and guides. As Hamilton states in his guide, early accounts describe how tourists used to bash the granite sarcophagus in the king's chamber to obtain a fragment as a souvenir. Some tourists did disagree with such an action, and so, instead, guides would offer a granite fragment from the antechamber. In this picture, we can still see the outline of a pilaster on the wall, and it even juts out at floor level, which is sadly all that remains today. The granite leaf blocks have gotten a lot of attention over the years, partly because of the half moon shaped boss on the back of the upper block, and Flinders Petrie even mentioned it in his writings on the Great Pyramid. You can see Hamilton's part 2 guide for the full quote. As stated, the boss is located on the upper block of granite. It's not perfectly centred on the block, being slightly west of centre, is semicircular in shape, with a flat lower edge, and it sticks out by about an inch, matching the thickness of the granite leaf where it wedges into the grooves on the eastern and western walls. The mentioned boss, well, the granite leaf in general is a bit of a mystery, with some thinking it was simply a portcullis block that hasn't been lowered. Though this is not the case, as the grooves in which it rests only extend down to the roof level. They don't go all the way down to the floor. As we can see, the semicircular boss has a well-defined shape, and to me, this indicates it must have had a function. 
having mechanical significance relating to the portcullis mechanism, as opposed to having any kind of deeper symbolic meaning. This is backed up by the words of Petrie, who says the workmanship in the antechamber is not as good as other parts of the Great Pyramid. He says the walls are rough and coarse, and he even said it's an example of how badly pyramid masons could work. But I guess this shouldn't be a surprise, because the antechamber was a functional space, a place to house three portcullis blocks to secure the sarcophagus and the king's chamber. It didn't need to have any kind of perfect finish, and this is exactly why I believe the boss once had some functional purpose, and was then left on the block, because, well, there's no need to remove it, no need to expend the energy. As Hamilton points out in his guide, as the granite leaf is made up of two blocks, it's possible it acted as a clamp for the ropes that were holding up the portcullis blocks beyond it. The ropes would have passed between the two blocks, and so the boss was likely related to a simple mechanism to raise and lower the upper block to clamp the ropes in place. The flat edge is on the underside of the boss, so as Hamilton speculates, it's possible a sturdy timber was placed at an angle under the boss. A hefty blow to the timber could lever up the upper block releasing the ropes and forcing the portcullis blocks downwards. Here we can see the opposite side, the south side of the granite leaf, and you can see the remnants of the original pilasters of the antechamber. This picture also shows the upper edge of the granite leaf, and, as you can see, it does look to be damaged, more so on the eastern side. Petrie actually believed that this wasn't damage at all, but was actually the natural edge of the boulder or piece of granite that was used to make the block, and this would explain why the boss was positioned slightly west of centre, as there is more bulk on the western side of the block. In this picture we can see large semicircular grooves between the pilasters of the antechamber and these would have housed wooden rollers, which lowered each portcullis into place with the use of ropes, which is better shown in this diagram showing a side view. Interestingly, grooves for the rollers are only on the western side of the chamber. Opposite, on the eastern side there is just a shelf. The reason for this could be because once the portcullis blocks were lowered, the shelf would put the wooden rollers out of position and so it would be near on impossible to lever the blocks of stone back up, and so the shelf is another security feature. With all of the ingenuity on display, as this diagram shows, the portcullis is actually pretty ineffective, because once the blocks were lowered, the two robbers could have just gone through this gap. Therefore, it's likely a cover stone was added to block access, as it's highly unlikely the pyramid builders would have been this short-sighted and leave a large gap in place. The likely reason for having this gap in the first place is because the portcullis mechanism would have been tested beforehand, and so access was likely needed for any modification or for resetting the mechanism. Then the blocking stone would have been added. Now we're looking at the south wall of the antechamber, with four vertical grooves that were clearly for ropes, and what looks like an inverted V-shape of damage. Today this damage has been restored, with the vertical grooves going all the way down the block above the entrance to the king's chamber. It is thought the four vertical grooves extended down to the top of the passage of the king's chamber, but according to Petrie this is not the case as the depth of the grooves becomes shallower as you go down the south wall, with a likely unbroken flat surface over the doorway. The damage may indicate that ancient tomb robbers did go over the portcullis blocks, maybe by somehow removing the cover stone, and this inverted V-shaped damage was their way into the king's chamber. There are many possibilities as to how the antechamber functioned, but I do love the explanation in this reconstruction by Hamilton. Here you can see everything mentioned, including the wood that's holding up the boss to open and close the granite leaf clamp. 
how the ropes were arranged and connected to the blocks, and how they passed over the wooden rollers I don't know. But I'm sure that someone could make a scale model of this chamber and work it out. Of course the weakest part of the whole Porcullis system is the cover stone. Because if you can break through or remove it, you can bypass the Porcullis system, and it would be the easiest way to enter the King's Chamber. And this was likely the route into the chamber because of this damage. Maybe somebody already knew this. Maybe somebody did know the finer workings of this chamber, and the robbing of the King's Chamber was in fact an Old Kingdom inside job. As Hamilton states in his paper, the data available on this chamber is old, and measurements are also inconsistent between the different antiquarians that recorded them. There are also differing opinions on the original state of the features we've looked at, and also how it functioned. What I've presented in this video is, in my opinion, the best educated guess as to how it worked. To me it does make a lot of sense, and it also explains all the anomalies we see. New analysis of the stones is required, as well as new measurements inside the chamber, but whether this will ever happen we don't know. The antechamber is an incredible example of ancient technology, and it shows the genius critical thinking and engineering of the ancient architects of Old Kingdom Egypt. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.